Hey everyone, it is Paige and welcome back to another YouTube video. I first off want to say that if you're not subscribed, welcome to my channel and make sure to hit that subscribe button. Um, what did they say? Like, comment down below, do all that good stuff if you like this video at the end of it. Uh, today we're going to talk about slow play. Yes, slow play. It's been a huge topic of discussion lately, especially with the last PGA Tour event with um, JB Holmes definitely slow playing his group and it just is kind of just a big topic that everyone has been talking about from my experience of playing tournament golf and just a lot of golf in general slow play is i think one of the biggest detractors of the game for people to get into it i hate slow play i hate playing with people who are slow it is the worst thing ever especially when you're playing in a tournament and you are playing with someone who is slow it is, in my opinion, it's cheating. And it is horrible to do to your playing partners. It is extremely disrespectful. And there's things that you can do to stop playing slow. And I'll t give you a couple tips that have worked for me. I feel like I'm a fairly quick player. I like to play fast. I think a lot of people like to play fast. So this is just kind of one of those, like, don't be that person, like don't play slow. So I'll give you some tips. Things I think that people can improve on when it comes to say the tour in professional golf. I personally think that they should, they're not enforcing the rules right now, so of course someone like a JB is going to play slow because there's no repercussions for his actions. They're playing for millions of dollars, so they're going to do that. There's no reason why they shouldn't do that. But for kids watching at home, for people watching at home, they're seeing these players and a lot of kids like to emulate these players and if you're playing slow, if they're playing slow, kids are going to start to do that. Or even parents are going to push that on their kids because they think that's what it takes to be a professional golfer and I think we really need to change that. Brooks Kepka has come out lately and said that slow play is basically horrible and that he'll kind of take his own time, uh, spend some extra minutes in the bathroom to get their group on play or on pace so they'll speed up. And that's kind of funny that's like that's what someone has to do, but like that's the thing. Like I guess the only way they kind of enforce it is they put groups on the clock but at the same time they're putting the whole group on the clock and usually in my experience when I was playing with someone who was slow it was so frustrating because they were playing so slow at their pace and I and my other playing partners had to keep up or play even faster to hopefully not be on the clock and then when we're on the clock that person still is playing slow yet you're playing faster and it really throws off your whole rhythm and your groove and it's like really horrible to do that to your playing competitors i've said this before it's like cheating it really is and it it just it's wrong and it's bad and i think we all need to do a better job together to improve pace of play so i'm going to give you a couple tips to um if you're not if you're just playing out there for fun still keep pace of play like still play fast so i'll give you a couple tips that will hopefully help you out in that aspect and leave a comment down below on what you think for about slow play i think for the professional golfers that they should dock FedEx points. So um, if you're slow, instead of getting a penalty or whatever it may be, dock maybe like 100 FedEx points or whatever it may be. I don't know how the point system works either. That's another issue that we should probably discuss because it's too confusing. Uh, they fixed it, but I still don't understand it. Um, so comment down below what you think they should do to help um, the professionals with pace of play. First tip is ready golf. I know some people love honors and that's great and all, but unless you're, if you're just playing for fun, definitely play ready golf and mention on the first tee. Usually most people are willing to do it, want to do it, so just mention to the people you're playing with, like, hey guys, you want to play ready golf? And more than not, they're going to say yes. So um, whenever you get the ball hit, be ready. Um, whoever is <laughs> ready to play, just like, do it. Just try to keep the pace of play, play fast, ready golf, best thing. Second thing is be ready to hit your shot. So if I notice sometimes if you're with a group of people, that person's hitting first. And so what I see someone do is they just kind of stand here. They won't even have a club. So they'll just be standing here, not doing anything, looking at the trees and the birds and whatever, just maybe on their phone. 
and everyone hits and all of a sudden they're like, oh, oh, it's my turn. Then they have to go through the whole process of finding a yard, finding a club, going through a routine and getting ready. Instead, when someone's hitting, be mindful of um, obviously not being too loud or in their way, but if they're hitting, okay, so invest in a range finder too. I think that's really great because all you have to do is grab your range finder, shoot it. So this is how easy the process can be and should be. Okay, 166. Analyze it quick. Okay, it's downhill. There's no wind. Well, I'm going to hit my 165 club. Okay, I'm ready to go, but say there's someone else ready to hit, I, I'm, well, well, imagine it, imaginary people out here, they're, they're going through their routine, they're hitting, but you're here, you're ready to go, like, once they hit, you step up and you're into it, you don't start your whole routine when someone, when it's your time, like, be ready, have the club you need. So there was a video of Bryson going around and with his caddy, of going through pretty much everything, that you could possibly think of to find the absolute perfect yardage. It was for a layup, I believe. And that's great, they can do that. Like I said, they're playing for millions of dollars and that is another issue that we can tackle another day. But let's just talk about amateur golf here for a second. How accurate are you, really? Can you hit it within a couple yards of where you want to hit it? Chances are probably not. <laughs> I don't even think I can do that, nor do I even get prepared to do that. Maybe that's why I'm not on tour, but again, that's another issue. We can tackle that one later, <laughs> but you don't need that. You just need a yardage. You can kind of look at the wind. It doesn't really take all that long to figure out what you need to do. You can tell if it's downhill or uphill. You can kind of guesstimate how much that needs to be. Same with what wind as well. You can kind of guesstimate that and you can do it actually fairly quickly. So you don't need to sit there and think about all of these yardages and what I need to do and what club I need to hit and what's perfect. Honestly, I think the less that you think, the better it's going to be. There's really simple, easy things that you can go through. So for example, this is 166 to the pin. I'm going to throw up grass. It's downwind. I'm going to take a couple yards off. If it's a lot of wind, um, it's usually two clubs, a little bit of wind, half a club, maybe a club. So this one I would say is half a club, not much wind at all. Uh, it's a little downhill, so that's not really going to affect it too much because I don't want to be short on this. I am going to pretty much take my 165 club or and the yards is 166. So as you can see, I went through it really quickly. I didn't need to write down my yardage. I didn't need to overthink it. I need, didn't need to do anything. I just need to think of the shot I wanna hit, which this one's straight. I don't really need to do too much with this. Focus on that. Focus on the shot you wanna hit. And it's really that simple. You don't need to overcomplicate the process to hit a good shot. I think sometimes if you think less, you're actually going to execute. So think on thing, think about the things that actually matter and what works for you. Okay, so I hit a good shot. Um, I didn't overthink the process. I did exactly what I needed to do. Um, was it the best shot I could have hit? No, but it was a good shot. It's not going to hurt me. Uh, again, most of the times we're talking about amateur golf here. You're out there just to have fun with your buddies, have a good time, hang out. So don't like stress too much about what club you need to hit, what you need to do. Just think of like a couple few things that like work for you. For me, it's tempo. I just have to think about tempo. So I quickly think about my yardage and what I need to do with my club. And then I think tempo and that's it. And usually for me, the process takes, gosh, it's really fast like it is really really fast and I feel like I do better that way I know a lot of people are different and you might disagree with what I'm saying but I think when you think less and think about just one or two simple swing tips it'll speed up the process of um, your pre-shot routine and also um, you'll hit better shots because you won't be so focused in on what you need to do and sometimes when you overthink it that's when bad things happen another thing too is I know Gosh, I see this when I'm waiting on a group. They will take the time to hit a two-footer as if like it's to win the Masters. 
and it's like every single hole and it's like two feet and you just see him like grinding over it. and it's like dude just like tell your buddies like that's good like that's one thing too like this one this is my playing partner's ball. That's good. Give it away. Pass it off. Like, don't be a jerk about it. Like, seriously, that's good. If you're playing for money or if you're playing with your buddies, it's a little more serious, obviously. Like, you can put them out, but don't make them always put it out. Like, it's really not that serious. <laughs> it's really not. And if you're playing for so much money to the point that, like, that is that serious and it's, like, life or death, then you probably should be playing for that much money anyways. You should, should be just like out here enjoying golf. So if it's anywhere within like a couple feet, whatever, just throw it away, toss it away. Um, just make sure that they know that it's good. Let's move on. Let's keep the pace of play. Okay, so another thing too is if you see your friend struggling to find a golf ball, say they hit it, um, in the woods or whatever help them out don't wait there while they're searching for it and then after a couple minutes go okay now I'm gonna come over and help you go over right away and then if it's like three minutes which is the allotted time they moved it from five um, I think it's three the new rules of golf we'll talk about that too because that's that's also annoying <laughs> and that will be something that we can discuss I gave myself that putt because pace of play so if you see them struggling, go over, help them out, look for it. If they don't find it, just tell them, okay, like, hey, like, let's move on. Let's just drop it here. Or, you know, just kind of ease their mind, too. Like, I know some people just get so, like, uptight about everything. Maybe make up some rules of your own. Just say, like, for example, Arizona golf is desert, and you tend to lose a lot of golf balls out here, especially true north, um, a lot of people are just losing golf balls and they're always searching for them and so sometimes when I play with people we say we play the desert as like it's a hazard so instead of having to like search for it or having to re -tee, we just go up there and take you know our two club lengths and that's that's it and like that really speeds up pace of play so you're not in a tournament you're playing with your buddies it's going to be fun if you're all playing by the same rules made up or not uh, it's going to be the same for everyone so it doesn't really matter and also will help pace a play. Another thing too is if you see people waiting behind you, like be mindful of them, you know? And if it's a single or a twosome and they're playing fast, let them go through as well because that will help with pace of play if you're a foursome. Um, just always be mindful of people behind you and don't feel entitled like, oh, I paid for this round of golf and I'm going to take my time. That's like super disrespectful and it really ruins the experience for a lot of other people. And I think it also ruins the experience for yourself because you're not really enjoying it. You're just like out there and um, just like have a good time, speed it up, speed up your pre-shot routine. Don't take it too seriously. Um, kind of make up some fun rules to help you if you're really struggling. And another big one is play the tee box that is correct for you. Golf is hard enough. You don't want to play from the tips if you're a higher handicap. Actually, a lot of people shouldn't be playing from the tips. That's another discussion that we can talk about um, another time, tee boxes, but it's really important. So play tee boxes that are comfortable for you, that um, you can reach fairways, that doesn't make the golf course too hard because that will also slow down play if you can't even reach a fairway or if you're always losing balls or obviously you're shooting higher there's more strokes which means that it's going to take longer so play from a tee box that's good for you and take your ego out of it we'll just play from a good tee box you'll have more fun we can talk about this um, more another time because i think tee boxes are really important a lot of people don't play the right tee boxes um so we can discuss that but you know if you know you're not that good of a golfer don't be playing the tips like it's not not that serious like you're not going to experience more of the golf course um, in a good way if you're playing from the tips so don't do it like you don't need to be doing it so just be mindful of your golfing abilities be mindful of other people uh, you know if you're really struggling just pick it up if you are you know eight shots deep or six shots deep or whatever it may be pick it up you know just move on to the next tool go sit down enjoy your beer enjoy the day like you're just out here to have a good time so just pick it up um, always, um, 
always be aware of your playing partners and what they're doing um, and your surroundings. Um, be ready to hit, don't overthink it. It's really simple to play fast and it's really not that much that actually goes into it. It's just a little couple things that you have to do and it makes a huge difference. Also a disclaimer, cause I know a couple of the comments will be, well Paige, you're spending like 10 minutes on a potting green. Well, there's no one out here today. I'm always very considerate of the people who are on the golf course, so I never shoot content or any of my YouTube videos when it's during a peak or busy time. Um, it is right now 4.30 in the afternoon, so there's no one out on this golf course, and so that is why I'm taking the time to do this. But even I always have to make sure that I'm not slowing down pace of play by shooting these videos or shooting my pictures or any of the content that you see so um you don't have to worry about that i am keeping pace of play all the time and if it is ever busy i never shoot videos i never do any of that stuff so you don't have to worry about that so uh, no need to leave any comments on um my pace of play because uh, there is absolutely not a soul out here today. Um, hope that helps out. Hope you enjoyed this video. There's a couple helpful tips about pace of play. Comment down below on what you think about pace of play. If you are as irritated by it as I am, because I probably you could sense that in this video that pace of play is something that's really frustrating to me and I really hope that it changes and people want it to change and want it to get better because I think it will really improve golf for a lot of people. Um, so that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be doing my putter next. I want to take a little bit of a break from the club fitting series. So I'll be doing the putter fitting next and a couple more vlogs. So be on the lookout for that. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video if you did, and leave a comment below.